Well, my name is Joe Barnes, or Mr. Barnes, I don't know. Um, and today I am going to be presenting on research I did last summer over in Taiwan. Um, a little introduction. Uh, basically, what we were doing here is we were using diatoms as indicators of pollution in one of the rivers over there. Uh, we were in a city in central Taiwan named uh, Taizhong, which I'll get there in just a second. And there's a river called the Fozzie River there. And we were collecting diatoms from the benthic layer and comparing them with the types of pollution that we found there. And we wanted to find out if the effluents actually would affect these diatom populations, if there would be different types of genera, uh, genera and if there would be uh, different amounts and basically just a different community structure. And we wanted to know what those relationships were. Um, and basically we wanted to see if we could actually use these diatoms to reflect what kind of pollution is in the water. That way without even knowing what kind of pollution it, it, there is, we could take out the diatoms and know immediately, okay, there's likely this kind of pollution here. Or we could get the pollution and know what kind of diatoms are likely to pr be present there. Um, this is where we were doing the research, the Fozzie River, and it's in a city of about 2 million people, I believe, um, in Taichung, and there are three main districts in it. Uh, there's the domestic area that just has, has the college right here, which is Onghai University, which is where I was doing the research there. Um, and then they have an industrial park, which has lots of different uh, all sorts of different operations and industries, so the, there's a lot more pollution in the river right by that. Um, and then there's the precision um, machinery technology park, which has a lot more like advanced technology waste and things along those lines. Um, so what we did was we set up three sampling sites. Uh, and for each sampling site we had an upstream and a downstream and uh, the river was flowing that way from right to left from us. Um, and what we did was basically we scooped diatoms out of the bottom of the river, uh, took samples there from all six sites, upstream for the domestic area, downstream for the domestic area, and the same with the technology and uh, machinery areas. Um, so, as for our methods, um, as I mentioned, we had six sites, and we actually used uh, optical and scanning electron uh, microscopes just to identify all the diatoms, and we used a primer stick software to determine the relative differences between uh, the different sites and between uh, our test and the test that we found <coughs> in previous literature. And for the diatom indices, I have one of this right here, which basically uh, is four different tests that you can run using diatoms just to test a, gen a general idea of how polluted the river is. And what we found was in almost all the sites except for uh, the domestic area, it was pretty badly polluted, and even there it was moderately polluted. Um, so there's a big pollution problem over there. It's a very heavily populated area, very densely populated area, and they have a lot of, uh, they're doing a lot of industry over there. Um, so what I did was, I did a lot of the background work, a lot of journal articles, a lot of finding other research to compare with ours. Um, I compiled all the data, um, and then, like, I, have how much data I have up there. And then the main study that, I was only there for five weeks, so I didn't have time to make, find all the data, collect data, and compare all of it with all these other journal articles that I was able to find. But the main one that I'm gonna talk about that I did have time to compare is the Suez Gulf study. Um, and I'll, that's on the next slide. So, and then also I hope the English on the papers that they're writing because I'm fluent. <laughs> That's debatable. <laughs> Thanks, and that's my professor. <laughs> so, um, so this 
Um, this is the study that I found. It's the Gulf of Sook, in the Suez, which um, has a lot of differences between the Fazi River and it because the Gulf of Suez has a higher salinity. Um, it also has a different level of pollution. It's a lot lower on pollution, but it has a different type of pollution. The pollution that it has is more or from oil refineries than from any sort of technology or uh, industry other than oil. Um, and also, it has, it's a lot, actually, it's actually quite a bit cooler over there. This study, they did tests in all four seasons uh, on 12 different sites, and on all of them, it was still, the average temperatures were colder than the average temperatures in Taiwan. Um, so that is a difference. And one big difference we found was that the dissolved oxygen levels were a lot lower in the Gulf of Suez. In the uh, Fozzie River, they were about 7.2 parts per million, whereas in the Gulf of Suez, it was around four parts per million. Um, but you can see all the sites that they tested there. Um, we did our tests in the summer, so it was, we didn't have all the different temperatures to compare every season. But um, there's just a sample of some of the data collecting all the different gen uh, genera. Yeah. And uh, this is what that ends up looking like after we put it through the primer six uh, and running a, the uh, PCR test on it. And basically, what you can see with this is these are all the Egypt tests over here. And these are all the Fozzi River in Taiwan tests. Um, and what PC1 is mainly showing is the differences in temperature and solar radiation. Um, they're a lot higher in Taiwan. And what the PC2 here is showing is the uh, actual like community structure and what types of diatoms are found there. And what we found was that there's very there's a lot of similarity here between the Fazi River ones, whereas the Gulf of Suez is a little bit more diverse when it comes to which diatoms it has in it. And the second test we ran was uh, the Briggs. Oh, the Bray Curtis. Yeah, Bray Curtis similarity test. That's what it was called. And basically, what this just shows is that the diatoms between the two groups only had a 20%, roughly a 20-30% similarity, whereas the groups just in Taiwan all had about a 70% similarity. Um, so actually more like 85, yeah, about 85% similarity, whereas the 70% was the uh, ones in Egypt and the Gulf of Suez were all about 70% similar to each other. So the two community structures are very different. Um, and it, that has a few possible reasons. Um, here's just some of the basic uh, physical properties that we found. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah. The dissolved oxygen was one of the main ones. This was our dissolved oxygen we found in Taiwan. In every study for every season over in the Gulf of Suez, it never, I believe it never got over about five um, parts per million. So that was a big difference. Um, obviously, salinity is a difference because it is the difference between salt water and fresh water. Um, and then temperature, uh, that's in Celsius, but uh, the highest temperature that was recorded in Egypt was about 31 degrees. Celsius. So there's only one test that we ran that was actually cooler than what they ran over there. Um, so a few things that we concluded from this were that uh, obviously the water conditions, such as dissolved oxygen and the temperature, are going to affect the diatoms. Um, they all have different places where they're able to thrive at best, and other ones where they'll struggle. Some of them actually struggle with the higher oxygen content. Um, and we actually found that uh, like Taiwan actually had, this river in Taiwan actually had fewer total types of diatoms than the one in, than the Gulf of Suez, um, which 
could be because of that, or it could be because of less pollution. Um, and they, the diatom communities definitely did resemble similar areas, like the ones in I and mean, the Fozzie River were much more similar to the other ones in the Fozzie River, but they had very little correlation with the ones that were actually in the Gulf of Suez. Um, a few things that we need to do, though, is we need to finish uh, studying with, uh, comparing to other places that are freshwater, uh, comparing to other places with uh, even warmer temperatures, or at least more similar temperatures. Um, we'd like to test in different areas with different levels of dissolved oxygen. Um, and just test everything, and then obviously, because we, we wanted to isolate the pollution, because we want to make that the main key, is to see how the, pollu the pollutants affect uh, the diatom community structure. Um, so there's a lot left to be done still. Um, but as I said, there were about 20 other journal articles that they're going to be comparing, and I, was, I would have if I had more time in Taiwan, but um, that's something I left with them. And and I would like to go ahead and thank uh, Dr. Wong, my professor over in Taiwan, and Dr. Siegfried for helping me get over to Taiwan and actually speaking Chinese because I'm very bad at it. <laughs> so, uh, any questions? Uh, they're algae. It's, oh, okay. a it's a type of algae, basically. Okay, so why are they associated with pollution? Do they drive Well, the reason we chose them was primarily because there are so many different genera of them. They're a very broad category, and they can be found all across the world. So it's something that we can compare easily across anywhere. And there's been a lot of research already used, like those, uh, the, These right here, um, all of those use diatoms just to address how much pollution is in the water. Um, those are uh, the trophic diatom index. Um, I have those all written down, but I can't remember the names of them off the top of my head. But they're all different tests that basically use diatoms to determine how polluted the water is. Um, so there's a lot of like previous material that we can compare to, and it's a very broad category, so it's easy to find them. Could you bring back the one that talked up with the stats on the river? Uh, Just to what's in it, the dissolved oxygen and the... Yeah, that one. Okay. So on this one, as we're looking at your river map, is it going from... Where, where's your furthest point upstream? Is it furthest F, point? F1 uh, you? That'd be F1, would be the furthest upstream. Right. Because that is the uh, area that has the least pollution. Yeah, so. And then uh, F1D uh, would be the downstream of the, the farthest downstream would be uh, F3D. Yeah. So if you could, so, I mean, what, what we're seeing on that graph, what we're seeing on this data here is that the numbers are exceptionally high. Yeah. Uh, most upstream, and as you go downstream, you're adding probably more tributaries and a wee bit more dilution. Uh, do the, does the diatom, how does the diatom uh, distribution change over that? Is there any tracking? Um, the, it's quite nasty, especially at uh, Yeah, the, the river gets pretty polluted by the end. Um, there were, we actually found a slightly higher concentration of diatoms in F1 than in the other two. Um, and actually those compared a lot more similarly to the uh, ones found in the less polluted area in the Gulf of Suez. And just as from a chemist's point of view, who doesn't know this stuff, uh, when we're talking about you know looking at these distributions, how universal is the distribution of diatoms say across the planet? Um, is it kind of constant, whatever river you go playing in? Or it, it's pretty constant. Obviously, there are a lot of different uh, genera that some are only in certain areas, but we use some of the more common ones to test. That way, it's more. We only compared ones that were found in both sites. That's what we ended up doing. Uh, we did see how many total were in each area, but some of those are likely isolated just to the in that site. So is the is the basic idea that 
Pollution increases nutrients that the diatoms then need, and then so the more pollution you have, the more diatoms there are? Or uh, not exactly. The idea is that they actually may prohibit um, diatom growth, or they, they can either inhibit or help, depending on the type of diatom. Uh, some of them thrive with more pollution pollutants of certain types. Others suffer. Um, heavy metals have been shown to actually, like the industrial park has heavy metals in the water near it. Um, that has been shown to actually decrease diatom community size in some areas. Um, but others actually are found more readily in areas with that. So it really depends on which type of diatom you're looking at. So, so then just to follow up, the, the table that you showed, the different colors, the different index indices that you used, are those uh, based on different pollutants, or can you give us some idea of what these different indices are? Um, those basically mentioned? just say overall level of pollution. They don't really tell a specific type of pollution. That's what we're working on, okay. is more to find out like if you can know exactly what kind of pollutants are in there just by looking at the diatom structure or vice versa. Uh, did you do anything that looked at phosphorus and nitrogen content of the water? Um, we had that data, I believe. Um, it wasn't very different than. It wasn't. Uh, it, yeah, it wasn't on that table. Uh, we had some data on it. It wasn't much different than the Gulf of Suez. Um, so we didn't really throw it in there because it wasn't. Like, for the, this comparison, it, 